Mr. Rogers Experiments. <laughs>toothpaste well as you can see this is very thick and mr roger would struggle to get this into the dropper so he puts some distilled water in to mix but again this takes some time so we're gonna fast forward past it Ah, at last, he's finished. And now the universal indicator solution, which as you can see has a very deep green color. And here, a few drops go into the glass cleaner, the detergent. <laughs> yes, that's right. Just one more into the antacid. Ooh, that one spread out quite a lot. Now the vinegar. Oh. Looks like blood. Ah, yes, thank you for not lining up the video very well, Mr. Rancher. As you can see, when it goes into the toothpaste, the color goes black initially, but look, look, it's going red. And then when it goes into the other two substances, you can see one of them just gives us a green solution, and the other one is slightly blue. Well, what's going on with that toothpaste? Giving it a bit of a mix, you can see that the color is very definitely an acidic color. And this is a bit of an anomaly in the experiment, because we expected to see an alkali. Mr. Archer then proceeds to mix around the glass cleaner one to try and make this clearer. Then on discovering that there are some bubbles, he tries to pop them. And then he uses various methods to try and, oh dear, get rid of the bubbles. Which ends up being, as you can see, entirely unsuccessful. Before we continue, let's just remind Mr. Archer that when he's handling certain chemicals, he should be wearing safety gloves. Bleach is one of those chemicals. Vinyl is one of those types of gloves. And the gloves in the picture below are the ones that we would most often use in the laboratory. There are other gloves. Latex is the most popular, it's very tight fitting and you can feel things through the latex very good, so that's good if you want to feel things through latex gloves, I suppose. Which may be good if you're doing certain activities like surgery, for example. Nitrile is another type of very close fitting glove, it's a synthetic rubber type of material and is even better than latex at resisting perforation. That's 
resisting people poking holes in it. And another reason why people don't just use latex is because they can have their skin can have reactions to the latex. Let's analyze the results. As you can see, we have glass cleaner, which appears very dark. But in the top left, we can see a little bit of that and how it may actually be a little bit greener and not just totally dark. Next to that, we have the detergent, which is very confusing because it's a mix of different colors. Uh, but the center where I'm sketching around now certainly appears to be darker than just dark orange, which is what the rest of it seems to be. Antacid is just blank. Vinegar is also very uniform. Bleach is also very uniform. The floor cleaner, I think, is a very uniform color, but uh, for some reason, it, in the center, it's much brighter, and on the edges, it's um, much darker. But I think it's the same color. It's just different in just uh, intensities of that color. The toothpaste is the one that really threw me because when we dropped the universal indicator in, it was an alkali color, but it changed to an acidic color, which is very strange. Also, the distilled water gave us a very strange result because according to our color chart, green is very much an alkali and distilled water is pretty much the very definition of pH seven. And in the table below, you can see that it's empty and we're about to go to the results. Yay! So, the results are a little bit strange. Let's compare the results to our to values that we would expect to see. For the glass cleaner, we would expect ammonia, which is a very common substance used in glass cleaner, to be somewhere in the range of pH 8 to 10. So this result was okay possibly slightly on the not that okay side of things. The dish detergent was uh, exactly like we expected, so that's a great result. The antacid, mm, our result was very much a uniform color, if you remember, very dark, but what we would expect is unsure. We don't know what substances were in this antacid, but some common substances found in antacid are magnesium hydroxide and calcium carbonate. That's the, these two uh, chemicals here. Oh dear, sorry calcium. As you can see from these chemicals, we would really expect the antacid to have a lower pH, but we, as I said, we don't know what chemicals are in this particular antacid, so it, it's possible so that result is okay. Vinegar is a simpler solution. The acid, there are, there are many different substances in some vinegars, but in terms of acids and alkalis, we really only expect to see some ethanoic acid. And we would expect a solution of ethanoic acid to be around two, pH 2 or 3. But we got a very... Uh, we a, a color that really indicated a stronger pH than that. So really, that's not a great result as well, because it's the the result should should be closer to what we would expect, and if anything, a little bit a, a bit lower, a bit closer to pH seven. Bleach, we expect pH ten, the most common substance used in uh, household bleach for floors or, or toilets is sodium hypochlorite. That has a pH of about eleven, and we got just lower than that. In other words, a little closer to neutral. So I think that is a, a pretty good result. It's okay. That's what we would expect. For floor cleaner and toothpaste, the pH levels of these can change a lot. So we don't really know if they're good or bad because we don't know exactly what was in our floor cleaner or our weird toothpaste. So they're okay. Finally, the distilled water, we got a result of about 9.5 when actually we really expect to get seven and there's only distilled water unlike many of the other substances this is not a a mixture of different chemicals this should be one chemical h2o and that is the pretty much the very definition of ph7 so that's a really bad result it shouldn't be that far off 
Well, toothpaste is one of the really confusing ones here because when we first put the universal indicator in, it went an alkali color and then it went an acidic color, which was quite confusing. But remember, toothpaste is a mixture of different substances. Now, we normally think of an alkali as best to reduce the acidity of the liquid in the mouth, uh, which uh, bacteria can produce acids, pooping acid or peeing acid. I'm not, I'm not sure what bacteria do really. Or maybe it's the same, what well, comes out the same places. Uh, okay, let's move on. In fact, whitening toothpaste can have a, a large range of pH levels. So it could be as low as 3.67 or as high as 11.13, according to the study in the link below. That is very acidic and very alkali, which is very strange. But it seems to be the consensus that a pH of 5.5 or lower, in other words, more acidic, demineralizes the tooth enamel. Now, our pH... Um, so, really, our result could be a whitening toothpaste. I don't really know, I'm afraid. So, I don't know if our result does reflect what, what the acidity of that toothpaste would be. The picture I just want to say, this Arm & Hammer toothpaste, I don't know its pH. This may be a great toothpaste for whitening. I just got it because it was a great picture. Well, I think the experiment went okay, but we did get a few strange results where our pH levels were considerably further away from 7 than what we would have expected. Why? It could be that the colour in the photos the photo of the chart and the photo of the experiment was not the same. When you take a photo, your camera usually auto adjusts the white balance uh, and the background light. Well, the, the white balance to adjust the, the background light so that people look the same no matter where photos are being taken of them. You might be in a room that has a very warm, yellowish, orangey light, or you might be in a room that has a very blue light. And you may have noticed when you take photos on your camera or your, your phone that sometimes you appear very blue. Uh, that's, that certainly happens to me. And that's because the, the phone or the camera has not got the white balance uh, right. So this, of course, could change, could have changed the colors that was that I, that I was working off on the two photos that you saw. The way of solving this one is, of course, using the chart and the colors uh, while you're doing the experiment together. But I, I wanted to do this online, so I took photos of it and did it a little bit later. And I was also possibly in a little bit of a rush uh, because I had other things to do and I might have been kicked out of the school lab. The universal color chart was quite old and faded, so it may have lost some of its original color anyway. Some of the substances that we use, like the toothpaste, are probably quite a few years old, and it's possible that the chemicals inside those substances have changed, and the acidity has also changed. I think it is possible that it was a whitening toothpaste, and given that the chemicals inside may have changed over the years as well, some of them may have decomposed, for example, and that could explain a different pH. Decomposed uh, is like a, when a body just breaks down when it's died. Chemicals, when we say chemicals decompose, that's when they just naturally break down and become different chemicals. It could also be that in something like the toothpaste, there were many different chemicals, and so there were unexpected reactions happening. It may be that the initial pH was an alkali pH, but as other chemicals slowly reacted with the universal indicator, it actually became more acidic. Well, I hope that was interesting about the universal indicator experiment. Perhaps next time Mr. Archer will wear his gloves. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll leave you with one tidbit of advice for life. Inspired by toothpaste, words are like toothpaste once they're out. It's hard to get them back in.